Good morning. <clears throat> well, we have a we have a great crowd this morning. Have you looked around? <laughs> Just a fabulous crowd. And I see uh, I see smiles from Jose all the way over there like to see the smiles. <clears throat> Isn't it great to be here, really? Yeah. Amen. In this beautiful day that we got, we have quite a number that's sick and in the hospitals and in your bulletin, there's a, a list of them, <coughs> including Julie next week that will have her tests uh, conducted, or treatments, not tests. Before we, uh, we, we're in Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. <clears throat> this morning we're going to go through Daniel chapters 2 through 6. I got behind, and so what I'm going to do is go through 2 through 6 and just kind of um, uh, hit, look at the main points in Daniel. I, I believe that we'll finish chapter 6, I hope. Before we begin this morning, let's have a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this beautiful day. And Heavenly Father, thank you so much for each day that you give us in our lives. And Heavenly Father, we have a number that are sick in the hospital, at home, unable to be here. And dear Lord, those that are in the hospitals, we ask that you be with their doctors and their nurses and give them knowledge. And so they will treat them where their good health will come back. Heavenly Father, help us to remember them. Help us to visit them, encourage them. And Heavenly Father, we remember Florence Dickey going through the trial that she is going through that every one of us will have to undergo. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you give her comfort, give her encouragement, and help us as Christians to love her and support her in every possible way. Lord, thankful for each member of this congregation. We're so thankful for their faithfulness and their love for you. And Heavenly Father, we are thankful for our deacons that do such wonderful work for this congregation that are strong in the faith. And Lord, we remember our elders we ask that you give them wisdom, give them encouragement as they lead this congregation and help us as Christians to support them in every way that we can and show them that we love them. And Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Jesus Christ who came to this earth and shed his blood for us so that we could have a home in heaven. And we ask that you forgive us of our sins in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good to see everybody. <clears throat> I think that I can move up a little and still, can you see okay, hear okay? And that way, I can, if I wander around, I can cut through. <laughs> I uh, am glad you're here. Let's turn to uh, Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. <clears throat> and just to remind you, uh, in Daniel chapter, before we start Daniel chapter 2, Daniel, remember, was one of the first group of captives uh, taken by Nebuchadnezzar in Jerusalem and taken to Babylon. Who were his three friends that went with him at the same time? Who were his three friends? That, I'm sorry, Dan? 
Thank you, sir. Sandrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were all taken from uh, Jerusalem to Babylon as captives all about the same period of time. And so Daniel was there. He, he, he lived to see, he lived to be in his 90s. I don't know the exact age he was, but he lived through six kings. Six kings. He was a devoted and faithful servant of God, wasn't he? But he was also very well thought of by those heathen kings because he, he served them on their court and did a good job working for them. No, no, nothing was ever wrong with his administration, and he was a good administrator. And he went all the way through all the kings of Babylon to uh, Darius the Mede and Cyrus the Persian. <clears throat> And at, even at age 90, he had a high distinction on the court and of the Persian court. <clears throat> so let's look at chapter 2, verse 1. Now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. How many have had a dream? And you wake up, and you got to make sure that it's real, <laughs> that it's not real. How many have done that? We all have, haven't we? We've gone to sleep, and, and we slept through the night, and, but we had this dream, and uh, we wake up early in the morning, and we look around, we see what time it is, we try to make sure that that's not really happening, what we dream, because it was something terrible. And we may even wake up, and we can't even remember the dream. <laughs> I know I have. I have woke up many times in the middle of the night or in the morning, and, and I, I tried to remember what that dream was, and I, I, just, I just couldn't do it. I wanted to do it. I just couldn't do it. We've all had that experience. And so he had a dream, and it's troubling to him. In fact, he can't sleep a wink. Nebuchadnezzar is in, uh, he wasn't much older than Daniel. And this is the second year of his reign uh, by himself. He was a co-regent with his father for two years. So this is Daniel's fourth year of captivity. So we know that. And so we go on, and, and the king had this disturbing dream. And when he woke, he couldn't remember. It troubled him so much he can't sleep a wink. And God is using this for what? He's going to fulfill what? His purpose. He's going to fulfill his purpose. It's amazing to watch what happens in the lives of people, isn't it, that we study in the Old Testament, how God uses them or how God makes something work out. Does it, does it work out today? It does, doesn't it? You bet. For Christians, it does. <clears throat> so when he awoke... In verse 2, he gave a command. Verse 2, he wants to bring in all his wise men. Bring me all my wise men, my magicians and everybody. He wants to bring them all in, so he's going to give them quite a challenge. <clears throat> so verse 4, when they came in, they say to the king, O king, live forever. Tell your servants a dream, and we'll give the interpretation. This is what normally would happen. This is back then. This is what normally would happen. You tell us a dream, and we'll give you the interpretation. I believe I could do that, couldn't you, <laughs> back then? Because you get the dream. If you, if you know what his dream was, then you can pretty much fake it, can't you? And you can tell that king something he wants to hear, something great. You just can't lose that way. But they're about to be given a challenge that they have never faced that no one could possibly do. So they say this. They tell him they're, going, you know, they're ready, but the real test form is fixing to come. They're about to see how wise these wise men are. We're about to see them squirm. And once they hear the demand of the king, they're in trouble. There won't be any faking. Verse 5 and 6. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, My decision is firm. 
if you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut to pieces and your houses shall be an ash heap. However, if you tell me the dream and its interpretation, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and a great honor. The king can't remember the dream, and he thinks these wise men are capable <laughs> of doing this, capable of telling him what? What's he want? What does he ask for here? What's he asking for, the king? I want you to do what? Tell me what I dreamed. You tell me what I dreamed. I can't remember. And then what? Then interpret it. So this would be a challenge. No one could do this except the one true and living God. No one could. Don't you know that these wise men, if you were there watching all this, we're right where you are, really. I mean, once you read God's holy word, you can see it, can't you? You can see it unfold. You can see it happening in your own mind. And don't you know they could have been knocked over with a feather? <laughs> this is a challenge. This is something that no one could do. They're probably pretty shook up about now. Only God could do this. And if they fail in this task, what's going to happen to them? They're going to be cut to pieces. <laughs> and then they're going to go to your homes, and we're going to make it an ash heap. We're going to burn it to the ground. We're going to probably eliminate your children and your wife and everybody, everything you have ever had. We're going to make it an ash heap. And so they got a lot of pressure. If they fail in this impossible task, they're in trouble. Tell us the dream, he said in verse 7. They say in verse 7, and we'll interpret it. They, they went back. They're asking the king, we want you to say that again. <laughs> we want you to clarify what you just said to us. Tell us the dream, and we'll interpret it, verse 7. <clears throat> Excuse me. The king, in verse 8, thinks something's happening. What's he thinks happening in verse 8? They're stalling. You're delaying. Now, what, what would be gained by these wise men delaying? What, what could possibly be their goal here? Why would they want to delay it? Yes, sir. They're hoping, that, oh, yeah, I remember what some of that dream was. If you, if he was they were hoping for a hint. <laughs> I would be. They're hoping he'll remember some of that dream. In fact, they're hoping that he'll change their, his demand, aren't they? That they'll change that up. They won't demand what he won't demand what he's demanding. Look at verse 10 and 11. The wise men, here's what they said to him. There's not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. It is a difficult thing that the king requests, and there's no other who can tell it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Well, you can see them sweat here, can't you? They're sweating. No king has ever asked such a thing. But the next statement, they got partially right. Those false gods couldn't do anything, but the one true and living God can. He knows everything. But without God's help, it's impossible Verse 12, it didn't make the king very happy. He, he's furious. He's furious, and so he commands them. He commands his people, all the wise men, his captain, and all the other soldiers are, he, he had under his command. He, he, all the wise men are going to be destroyed, including Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, including them. Verse 14, then, account, then with counsel the, and wisdom, Daniel answered Arioch, 
captain of the king's guard. What's this captain's job? Yeah, yeah. his job, the captain, is to round everybody up. Get all of those astrologers, all those wise men. Bring them and and kill them. That's exactly. And now this captain, Arioch, who's in charge of all this, he goes to Daniel. It's, I guess, Daniel's turn. I don't know how early in this event it happened. He may not have killed all of them, but he's got to Daniel now. I know he doesn't kill them all because Daniel's going to ask him not to. And so, and, and then he comes to him. Verse 14, Then with counsel and wisdom, Daniel answered Arioch, captain of the king's guard. Verse 15, you know, oh, I'm, you know, remember, it's not America the king executes whoever he wants at a whim, doesn't he? No judge, no jury, no nothing. Verse 15, Daniel says, Why is this decree from the king so urgent? What would we say today in our words that Daniel said to the captain? What's your hurry? What's your big hurry? Why are you in such a rush? And so he says that to the captain, and so the captain informs him of everything that has taken place. Verse 16. He goes to the king, Daniel, and he asks the king for some more time. In verse 17, then Daniel went to his house. Verse 19. Well, in verse 18, he went to his house so he could... Tell Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to pray for him so that God would give him the ability to tell what that dream was and the interpretation. What's the message there for us? Just right there. I'm sorry, George. We always seek guidance from God, don't we? We always pray. As Christians, we need to be praying Christians that we're praying not just for ourselves, but who? Our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. fervent, thank you Hank, the fervent prayer of a righteous man, what? Avails much. We're to be praying Christians. And for Christians, what a blessing because God hears and answers our prayers. Might not be on our time frame. He knows what's best. And so Daniel asked them to pray for him that, that God would give him that ability to interpret that dream, to know what that dream was. And then verse 19, the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night by a vision. And Daniel, what does the first thing Daniel do? What's the first thing Daniel does? I'm sorry? Say that again. Thank you. Blesses God's name. Who's he giving credit to? God. He's giving God the credit. How many times in our life have we prayed so hard, so hard, so hard, so hard, and then when God answers our prayer, we do one of two things. <laughs> The first thing we should do, and that's what? I'm sorry? Thank God. Give him the credit for answering our prayers. But sometimes what do we do? 
we just forget, don't we? <laughs> we forget and just go on. I'm sorry? We say we're just lucky. Boy, is that lucky. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. That's exactly true. We, we're humans, aren't we? And we do that, and we fail sometimes, and God's long-suffering with us. <clears throat> Verse 21. And he changes the times and the seasons, and he removes kings and raises up kings. God is in control of all things, all things on this earth, including the seasons. I don't know if I, Jim, if I'll get this right or not. But he tilted the earth 23 and a half degrees on its axis. And so as it makes its way around the sun, we're able to enjoy the seasons that we have. If it wasn't 23 and a half degrees, we wouldn't have seasons. But God is in control of everything. Everything, everything in our life, everything in this world. And he raises up kings and takes them out. And so Daniel asked that the wise men not be killed in verse 24. Don't kill the wise men. He said, I know what the dream and the interpretation is. So the captain and him go to the king and the king speak. I mean, the captain speaks to the king, and he says, "I found a man of the captives who knows the dream and the interpretation." Verse twenty-five, who can tell that dream? Who can tell you what that is and the interpretation? Verse twenty-seven. I want you to notice what happens here in verse twenty-seven. Daniel confirms something. He's going to confirm to the king that none of your people could do this. None of your wise men, none of your astrologers, none of your Chaldeans, none of them could interpret and tell, tell what the dream was nor interpret it. He wants to verify that with the king right off. Why is he doing that? If you read a little bit further, you'll find out exactly why he did that. Why did he verify that with the king, that none of his people could do it? Look at verse 28. There's the answer. What's verse 28 say? There is a God in heaven. Isn't that amazing? He's wanting to verify. He wants to verify with that king that none of his people could do this so that the proper credit will be given not to Daniel, not to him, but to who? God, the one true God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. He's given him the full credit. He wants to make sure the king knows that it, it, none of your people could do it. I can't do it. If the power is not in me, it is in God. And their gods couldn't do it. And their gods couldn't do it. Thank you very much. I didn't want to leave that out, did I? The God in heaven, the one true and living God, can. Then in verse 31 through 35, verse 31 through 35, he tells him what the dream is. There's a great image in excellent splendor, he says, the head is of fine, pure gold. The chest and arms, what are they made of? Silver. The belly and the thighs are made of what? Bronze. Legs of iron and feet are mixed with iron and clay. And then there is a stone. A stone cut without hands. Cut without hands. And then look what it does. The stone cut without hands strikes the image. It broke the feet into pieces and everything else crushed. And it became everything, became like shaft on a summer threshing floor. 
And the stone became what? What did that stone become? A great mountain. A great mountain. And that mountain filled the earth. Now he's going to tell him the interpretation. In verse 36 through 45, he, Daniel's going to interpret that dream. Several centuries of world history in one verse in God's Word tells him that, they, that this represents four world empires. The head of fine gold is the Babylonian Empire. God had given the Babylonian Empire strength and power and glory. And Daniel says, after you will rise another kingdom of chest and arms of silver, the Medo-Persian Empire. And then after that, the belly and thighs of brass, the Macedonian or Greek Empire under Alexander the Great, legs of iron and feet of clay and iron, the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire and a small stone cut with hands is what? That fills the whole earth, the church, the kingdom of Christ, the great spiritual kingdom of Jesus Christ. It would grow and fill the whole earth. And those who say the kingdom isn't established yet would find it hard to get around Daniel's interpretation here. Verse 44, and in the days of these kings, the Roman Empire, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. The kingdom will stand forever until the end of the world. And during the Roman Empire, the kingdom would come. Jesus promised that. Look at Matthew 16. Flip over to Matthew 16 and hold your place there. Matthew 16, beginning at verse 13. <clears throat> Matthew 16, beginning at verse 13. When Jesus came into the reign of, region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am, that I, mean, that I the Son of Man, am? Excuse me. Verse 14. So they said, Some say John the Baptist... Some say Elijah and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. In verse 15, he said to them, But who do you say that I am? In verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. On this rock, on this fact, on the fact that Jesus Christ came to this earth, and he's going to die on the cross, and he's going to establish his kingdom. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it, verse 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you on earth you will be bound, that you bound will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. When was this fulfilled? When was it? The day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> who are citizens of that kingdom? Do you want to be a citizen of that kingdom? Yes. It's for Christians who obey the gospel. We come up out of that watery grave. We made contact with the blood. We're in Christ. He automatically adds us to what? His church. And we become citizens of that kingdom and live a faithful life to him. I want you to look at the last book of Acts, the last chapter of the last book of Acts. <clears throat> Acts 28, verse 31. The last verse of the book of Acts. 
Acts 28, 31. Look what's happening. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Now back up a little bit to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verse 12. Acts chapter 8, verse 12. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning what? The kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were what? They were baptized. <clears throat> now let's go back to... Uh, chapter 2 and verse 46. Chapter 2 and verse 46 of Daniel, I'm sorry. <laughs> Daniel, chapter 2 and verse 46. Anybody have any comments so far? Yes, sir. I, I could tell by the look on your face. <laughs> and then we'll go back to the back. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh. I'm sorry. Speak up. Uh-huh. It could be him and God. Could be usually when they say, like it, uh, when the earth was created, let us make man in our image. Who's us? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We're, we're just not certain, but Daniel is going to interpret it. God's going to tell him what to say. He's given him the power to interpret dreams and visions. And he will tell him exactly what to say. So it could be that. Did I? Anybody have any other thought on us? <laughs> or we? We. Paul, did you want to say something? Yeah, he, he could have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego too. Amazing, isn't it? it uh, just to watch that flow. Uh, I think that's why uh, in first book of First Peter that uh, Darwin and I were talking about this. The angels desire even to peek into or to watch it unfold, all the things that are happening. It's amazing to them too, isn't it? Not just us. <clears throat> I forgot where I was. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you. Great, great comments. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Um, verse 46. <laughs> then Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostate, prostate, prostate before Daniel. He's laying flat. And commanded that they should present an offering of incense and incense to him. If, if the king is trying to worship Daniel right here, Daniel's not having any of it. But then the king said in verse 47, 
Your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, the revealer of secrets. Verse 48. Then the king promoted Daniel, made him the over the province a ruler of Babylon, and made him the chief administrator over all the wise men. And Daniel asked the king that he make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the provinces, or the province of Babylon. <clears throat> you know something what you also see here? And we'll see it throughout the book of Daniel if you study the rest of the book. Daniel always did what was right. He would never do what was wrong according to the will of God. He's a constantly obeying God, a dedicated, committed servant. <clears throat> it's just amazing to see that. It's just that... It, if we had politicians with Daniel's character today, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> wouldn't that be great? Chapter 3. You're not going to believe chapter 3. <laughs> chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar, he sets up this colossal image. Oh, here we go. He sets up this colossal image and he summoned all of his officials to come to the dedication, which included Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and all of the officials so that he can dedicate this image and they refuse to take part in idol worship. Verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width was six cubits and he set it in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon now this image is about 90 feet high I, I tell you this just makes you scratch your head doesn't it I don't know how much time had, has passed but it just makes you scratch your head that why is he doing this after Daniel interpreted the dreams for him. So after he sees the mighty power of the one true in God, how it just you want to scratch your head and say, what is he doing? But you know something? Think about it. <clears throat> There's really not a dime's worth of difference between people then and people today. How many times have we said, Boy, I'll never do that again. <laughs> There's no way. I'll never do that again. And then time passes, and all of a sudden we start to justify our actions. I have. I justify that. I can, I can, I can do that. I can justify why I didn't do that. I don't know what this image was. I... I, I <coughs> You know what makes you think what the image might be after what we just studied last chapter? It, you, you almost think, well, this is probably an image of the dream he had. It could have been. Or it could have been an a image of himself 90 feet high. Or it could have been an image of a false god that he had. We don't know. We'll never know. We'll, we'll, we'll know eventually. But we don't know while we're alive on this earth. But you, uh, you, just, you just scratch your head and you pray for yourself. <laughs> May I never have this attitude. In verses 2 through 7, the king gathered up. Oh, yes, Don. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 No, sir. Don, it's it's uh, when we start to fall away. It's not all at once, is it? 
it's just kind of gradual, isn't it? And we say, well, I, I can't do that. I, I got to get back. But then time passes and we begin to justify our actions. Well, there are a bunch of hypocrites down there. And so we justify. And before we know it, we're out of fellowship. Yes. It is our human nature, isn't it? The human part of us. Thank you. That's a great comment. Um, I thought of something when you said that, that add to what you said. And I, 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 Bob, I can't remember. <laughs> that was an excellent comment. Excellent. Um, anybody else? Anybody else have a comment? <clears throat> so we have to be on guard to watch ourselves to be on guard to be be have the faith and conviction and dedication of Daniel um, verse 2 through 7 the king gathered his leaders all together and he said when you hear the musical instruments played and 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 uh, the herald cries out then everybody is to fall down and worship this image and whoever does not will be put where? In the fiery furnace. Verse 6. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused. <clears throat> and some of the leaders went to the king and told on him. Verse 8. Nebuchadnezzar asked them, is this true in verse 14? He's, he's taking the time to bring them in to him front, to confront him and say, is this true, what I heard, that you will refuse to worship? And it didn't take them any time to prepare an answer, did it? They were not going to obey this king's command. They were not going to worship that idol, that false idol, verse 17 and 18. If that is the case, our God in whom we serve is able to deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you set up. Wow. If you would have been there watching that, and you would have saw the conviction on them and Nebuchadnezzar looking at them and try I mean uh, yeah trying to see if if that was really how they felt is it true <laughs> and they said our God is able to deliver us what faith what conviction does that pertain to us today yeah our God is able to deliver us. Isn't this wonderful? Yes, sir. Never. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And even if we die, so what? <laughs> if we're a faithful servant of his, dedicated and committed like Daniel. I only got just a couple of minutes left. I wanted to go a lot further. Next Sunday, I'm not quitting yet. <laughs> I'll quit when they start to line up. Yeah. <clears throat> Next Sunday, we'll do the major prophets a review of the major prophets then the next Sunday we're going to do Jonah and then the next Sunday we're going to do review of the minor prophets and then we'll start our new quarter so they let's, let's go ahead and go to verse 19 
The king was furious when he heard this. And he commanded the furnace to be set, heated seven times more than they normally do. That thing was glowing. <laughs> and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, verse 21, are wearing all their clothes. And, the, you know, usually the executioners divide up the clothes, but not here because they're in a hurry. The king's in a hurry. And they throw them into the fire in verse 24. And even the people, the executioners, in verse 22, the fire was so hot that it even killed them. Verse 25. Uh, 25. I see four men walking in the furnace in the midst of the fire. Verse 25. The fourth man is like the Son of God. Verse 27. And they saw these... Uh, and they saw these men on whose their bodies the fire had no damage. In other words, they saw them four. And then the king said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out and come here. And they come out and everybody, the whole room is full of people. And they're looking. Their, their hair isn't singed. Their clothes isn't burned. And what more else? What? You can't even smell smoke on them or fire. And so, verse 28, <clears throat> here's what the king said. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. The king said, no other God could do this in verse 29. So the king, king made this decree. Anyone who speaks against God, they will die. And their homes will be made in ash heap. I guess that's his favorite, favorite thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> I wish that we could go on. I know you can't tolerate me for another hour, but <laughs> I could go on. We got a lot of things to cover in Daniel. I hope that you will study yourself in Daniel's chapter 5 and 6. You've been an excellent class today, and it's good to see everybody. You make my heart feel good.